What's going on everybody? Michael Silva here, preparing for the volatility storm. I'm out here in New York, so I'm just going to keep today's video very compact. Wanted to get it out heading into tomorrow's CPI report. It's on everyone's mind, and yes, it is an important data drop that is coming, and it's sure to shake up the markets, and I know this because I'm looking at implied volatility. And let me just tell you this, it's huge by huge. So tomorrow at 530, which is an hour before the market opens, you're going to see some large, large movements in the marketplace, whether you're looking at futures or just pre-market stuff. Okay. The consensus for this report, the big one here, inflation rate year over year is for 8.1. Forecasts is at 8.2. And then the previous was 8.3. All right, if we take a look at something like the Cleveland Fed's now casting model, they're even forecasting an 8.1 on 8.12 on that number. So we'll see here if it comes in higher than expected or if it comes in under. There's people that are saying that it's going to come in under. We reach peak inflation. It's going to start sinking off. Also, other people saying it's going to be sticky. Let me tell you this. You can debate it back and forth. It doesn't really matter. Having an edge in these market conditions is very, very difficult to come by. So it's all about focusing risk first. Okay. Now I want to reiterate all this, which is very just incredible amounts of volatility. We're taking a look at the VIX here. It's currently at 33.57. Okay. It is well into the thirties. So this is telling me a couple of things. It usually volatility doesn't typically stay up here for that long. So it typically subsides and looking at the market as a whole, it looks like it's setting up for, you know, a potential really big rally. So if the, if the CPI data comes in lower than expected, we might, we might have that rally. However, it's also sitting very prime to the point of potentially exploding higher as far as volatility goes or the market really going into a full-blown crash mode. Um, and, and that's just the thing. You probably heard the saying before, crashes happen from overextended areas. Um, and then you also get, you know, rallies that can just melt completely up and just leave a lot of people in the dust. It's a very, very difficult place to be in. And I'll tell you how my portfolio is positioned heading into this report. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I've already said it. Okay. It's not just fixed volatility, Kate, for the S&P 500. Look at NASDAQ volatility. NASDAQ volatility is at 39.51. It is a couple handles here from 40%. It's it's absolutely wild as far as the volatility there in the Nasdaq. And then the Russell volatility too, it's at 3810. This is not a this is not an area where you want to just kind of like, oh yeah, I'm trying to pick a bottom here. It's it's very dangerous. Okay, now heading into tomorrow, I want to look at the S&P 500 first. This is the SPX. This is the big product. They have options expire actually tomorrow. And it's letting us know this. The expected move is 80 dollars plus or minus so it can move so a 56 percent vol it can move up 80 dollars tomorrow and potentially 80 dollars lower and we've been seeing you know two standard deviation moves so this is just pricing what the cpi report is i put down the numbers right here right so three six five eight and then three four nine six those are the numbers to pay attention to going into tomorrow for the spx however i want to jump into some 15 minute time frames to give you an overall you know microscopic zoomed in view of what we're currently seeing we're going to look at the cues first the cues this option expiration is actually for the end of week okay um so it's plus or minus eight dollars or nine dollars going into um not tomorrow's just not to, just tomorrow's trading session but also fridays as well and this is some important stuff because that is also quite a bit of volatility packed into this you know week ahead now the orange lines those are what the options market already depicted as far as handicapping risk going into this current week so the low is right around 257 or 253, and then the high is around 280. This box right here is just visualizing to show you just how extreme a movement could potentially be in these next couple of days. So let's say we do get a rally. Well, where is the expected move potentially taking us to? The expected move is taking us to this anchored VWAP. This anchored VWAP right on the screen, this light orange one, is actually the anchored VWAP month to date and quarter to date. Okay, so you don't want to really be bullish in this in this scenario if we just come up to this anchored VWAP. What you want to do is see price doodle around up there and then potentially then um, look for price to overtake that and this to start turning back up. The purple line is a declining five-day moving average. And then right here, the orange uh, anchored VWAP is weak to date. Okay, so we're below that, we're below, below a declining five-day moving average, and we're below a quarter-to-date and a month-to-date anchored VWAP. So right now, the bears are in full control. Up until we can get above that, right, is when we could become a little bit more bullish. But you got to be careful how we get above it, all right? Because if we just shoot to the sky up above and it just, you know, 
just like we did over here, you need to see price consolidate. You need to see these start turning back up and give us a little bit more confidence. Otherwise, you know, you got to just be on guard, continue to be on guard. Now, let's take a look at the spies. The spies also below a declining five-day moving average, below the quarter date, month-to-date anchored VWAP, and it's below the week-to-date anchored VWAP. As far as the weekly expected moves go, we haven't tagged it yet, and it's to the low end about 350 and some change, and then to the high end, 375 and some change. So some wide, wide, wide expected moves here allowing for obviously a lot of volatility. Now coming into Friday's closing session, right? There's still expected $10 move. Now remember, if we're going to kind of like look at, you know, the SPX and compare it to the SPY, tomorrow the SPX, right? It's an $80 move, which is a roughly from what I've seen about a plus or minus $8 move in the SPY. So we're looking here in the SPY potentially plus or minus $8 just coming into tomorrow. And I want you to re- remind you once again, we've seen two Sigma moves. Okay. So as it stands right now, that's a pretty huge move. So it's going to be a very important to, to one, not try to really handicap the direction of where the market's going to go because you're going to get some wild swings. So how do you prepare for this? I'll tell you exactly what I did. You can do whatever you want, but I have no edge when it comes to trading into this CPI report. Zero edge. I have no idea what's going to happen during all this volatility. So my big portfolio, I'm 100% cash. And then my smaller trading portfolio, I have three equity shorts on. I'm not going to really dive into what those are, but they, they were green today. And I just try to short into the green and they're a little bit in the money as of right now. And it's not even large positions. Okay. So that's how I am kind of stepping back, letting the market digest the report. And when the report comes out, I'm going to be anchoring a VWAP to that. And I'm going to see if price can close above it or if it can close below it. And I'm going to see what price does after the market digests this data. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Hope it helped out. See you later.